All right, and we are live. Good evening po sa inyong lahat mga kaguro. And of course, welcome back to Gurong Pinoy. We would like to especially welcome back the members of Team Piche. Again, if you are a member of Team Piche, then you can answer our quizzes. You can watch our full-length video. You can download all the PDF files that we have. Po, pwede nyo pong balikan lahat ng ating mga videos kahit nung last year pa po na videos natin. Of course, your Team Piche is only until September of this year, pero nagsimula po tayo October pa ng last year. No? So marami pong files. Marami pong videos na nandun po sa Team Piche. Po, pwede pa po kayong humabol. Just send us a message to our Facebook page so that you can join our free pre-board and free final coaching. If you are already a member of Team Piche, please take note of our pre-board and our final coaching, ang ating pong pre-board for Gen Ed. That's 150 items. That will be on August 26th. And then for Prof. Ed, that's also 150 items. That's going to be on August 29th. Your pre-board is going to be through quizzes. At po pwede nyo po itong sagutan from 7 a.m. until 10 p.m. No? So in-extend po natin siya no? hanggang alas 10 ng gabi. Po pwede pa po kayong sumagot ng ating quizzes. That's for our Gen Ed Prof. Ed na pre-board. Now after that, we are going to start with our discussion of the pre-board items through our final coaching discussion. And that is going to be still on MWF, no, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 7 p.m. Philippine time, and that will start on August 31st. So August 31st until September 23, uh, meron po tayong final coaching discussion. Again, these are all exclusive for our Team Piche members. So if you'd want to join us for our pre-board and for our final coaching, please become a member of Team Piche. Mag-send lamang po na message sa ating Facebook page. So again, magpa-member po kayo sa Team, uh, team Piche para po maka-join kayo sa ating pre-board at sa ating final coaching. That is the only method through which you can join our pre-board and final coaching. Wala pong separate na payment for our pre-board and final coaching, but you can only join us again by becoming a member of Team Piche. So lahat po ng members ng Team Piche, good evening. Of course, kawai-kawai, mag-send na po ng ating messages. Hello, good evening po lahat ng members ng ating Team Piche. Now, we are also um, glad to welcome all the members of our newest team. This is Team Brunner, and this is for the March LET takers. So, so March 2023, if you will be taking your LET in March next year, you will be part of Team Bruner. So, kung paano maging parte ng Team Bruner, mag-send din po ng message sa ating Facebook page. Kung kayo po ay nakapag-send na ng message, kung kayo po ay nakapag-register uh, na, pero wala pa pong reply, hintayin nyo lamang po yung ating admin, no? Hindi po kami scammer. Legit po tayo, no? So, hintayin nyo lamang po yung ating admin para po kayo ay ma-add sa ating Team Peche for September or Team Bruner for March 2023. Okay, so again, we still have our discounts for the first 300 members of Team Bruner. So if you'll be taking your lab this March 2023, I'm magpa-register na po, na magpa-member na po sa Team Bruner to send us a message through our Facebook page on how you can become a member of Team Bruner. Now, we also still have our GCash and Load Pa promo that is subscribe, answer, and win GCash and Load through our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is also Guru Pinoy. That's from Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 7 p.m. So tonight, we are still going to be uh, picking our five lucky winners, the first five who will be answering the question of the day correctly. So again, please make sure that you include the number of the items. So pag number five or number four, number three, yung question of the day natin, include po yung number. And then, of course, uh, put the letter of your choice. If your letter of your choice is correct, napasama ka sa five, first five no, na nag-send ng correct choice, then you are el eligible for our GCash or Load Pa promo. No? So that's uh, only through YouTube. Again, do not forget to include the number of the item. Okay? Now, we'd also like to welcome back, of course, Team Thunders, yung mga matagal na pong nandito sa atin sa Guru Pinoy. And of course, our newbies, kung kayo ay first-timers, kawai-kawai din, of course, please do put that in your comment box. And uh, also, we would like to especially say our thanks to all our star senders, sa mga nagsisend ng stars sa ating Facebook Live, and also sa super chatters, super secret senders naman sa ating YouTube. Maraming maraming salamat po. Now, tonight's discussion is general education, but before we start, let us all have our opening prayer. Dear Lord, I come to you to ask for your guidance and direction in this study session. 
I ask that the Holy Spirit fill me with strength, creativity, and understanding to get through my studies without difficulty or sin. Help me hold my focus and attention. Help me to retain all that I learned. Please make my, make my mind sharp and keep distractions at bay. If any part of my studying is weak or lacking in some way, let it be revealed so that I may correct it. Thank you for this opportunity to learn. Amen. All right, so once again, this is General Education. Please do like, love, share our video, start a watch party, tag your friends. While waiting, paki like na po, no? like, love, and share na ng ating video. We will be starting in a few minutes. Okay, hello po sa lahat ng ating mga first timers. Magtag na po ng inyong friends. Okay, kung kayo po ay naghahanap pa rin ng mga kagroup, no? para mas makamura ay maglagay po kayo sa ating comment box. Ma'am Zena C. Pontejon, maraming salamat po for sending stars. Ganon din kay Ma'am Maribel Litan, good evening po. Ma'am Michi Berdan, thank you for sending us 75 stars. Ma'am Mary Vic, thank you for the 75 stars. Ganon din kay Ma'am Jenny May Pachiliel for sending us 80 stars. Maraming maraming salamat. Ma'am um, Baby Ann Rivera Hala, thank you po for the 75 stars. Again, maraming salamat po to all our star senders, Sir Nardi Morsha Gomez, 75 stars. Ma'am Riza Mel, 75 stars. Thank you so much. Again, if uh, if you are a newbie, pakilagay po sa ating comment box. Please do like, love, share this video. Sorry, they watch party, tag your friends. Send us stars, super chat, super stickers. We start with question number one for Jen Ed. Number one, what results when the government spends more than what it solicits in the form of taxes? Is it letter A, fiscal overspending, letter B, unfunded mandates, letter C, excessive allotment, or letter D, fiscal deficit? What's your choice for question number one? This, of course, is part of social science. Okay, what is your choice? Please put that in your comment box. Again, kung wala pa pong reply yung ating admin sa inyo, no? Uh, please be patient kasi marami po kayong kinikator ng ating admin. So, babalikan po kayong lahat, no? So, hintay-hintay lamang po. And again, uh, pasensya na. But um, we have to also understand sometimes kasi is out of office hours na din yung messages, no? So, hindi na, uh, natutulog din po yung ating admin plug, kapag ka after 5 ay wala na po yung ating admin. So, hintayin nyo lamang po. Babalikan po kayo lahat ng ating admin. Ma Marisa Candoli Magparok, maraming salamat po for the 75 stars. Thank you. Ganun din kay Ma'am Mika Shane Hilo Likayan, maraming salamat. And Ma'am Jonalyn Lasate Malubag for the 75 stars. Maraming maraming salamat po. Yes, maraming hindi pa na, nasisin yung messages no, since this morning. So again, hintayin nyo lamang po uh, pag meron akong bakanti mamaya, babalikan ko din para matulungan ko yung ating admin. Okay, I see a lot of letter D's in our comment box. Okay, I see a lot of letter D's. Pagkapos talaga sa budget, no, pag hindi, ka, hindi talaga kaya, meron din po tayong 500 videos sa ating YouTube channel. So po, pwede nyo din pong magamit yan para po of course matulungan kayo maipasa yung let pero pag po pwede naman magpa-member po kayo sa Team Peche kasi nababalikan nyo po lahat ng full length video at na-download nyo po lahat ng ating PDF files. Maraming salamat Ma'am Jackie and Baby Shy for the 37 pesos na dito sa ating super sticker sa YouTube. Maraming maraming salamat po. Okay, I see a lot of letter Ds and the tumpak na choice here would be letter D. That's fiscal deficit. Now, so again, the question is, what results when the government spends more than what it solicits in the form of taxes? And the correct choice natin again is letter D. That's fiscal deficit. Now, ito po yung terms na ginagamit. Now, let's take a look at your uh, definition. If a fiscal deficit occurs when a government's total expenditures exceed the revenue that it generates. No, sobra yung gastos kesa sa revenue through tax, kesa sa tax na nalilikom ng gobyerno mula sa tao, mula sa businesses, no? sobra-sobra yung kanyang expenditure, yung kanyang, uh, ang kanyang 
um, spending, excluding money from borrowings. No, wala pa yung, yung mga money na pinaro niya, yung money na niloan ng government. Okay? So, fiscal deficit po yung ating hinahanap. Congratulations sa mga nakatumpak, sa mga nalikwak naman. Better luck next time, no? At least, again, lag kong sinasabi, at least sa actual let, alam nyo na kung ano yung magiging sagot. Uh, nakikita nyo, iba yung mga nagko-comment yung mga passers na natin, sinasabi na magtiwala lamang kayo, kahit naligwak kayo dito, makakapasa kayo sa let, no? Dahil, of course, uh, making mistakes is one of the best methods through which we learn. Okay? So, number one, letter D, ang tumpak na choice. We go to number two. Who was a famous Austrian opera composer during the classical period known as Child Prodigy? Letter A, Mozart. Letter B, Verdi. Letter C, Hayden. Or letter D, Beethoven. Okay, what is your choice for question number two? Ma'am Micaela P. Villarreal. Maraming salamat po for the 75 stars. Ganun din sila Ma'am Amy Neronos Nila. And Ma'am Christelle May Sibatna for the 75 stars. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am Omaira D. Maraming salamat for the 75 stars. Ganon din kay Ma'am Christina Gubalani, 75 stars. Maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, Sir Lawrence Barila for sending us 75 stars. And Ma'am Opiniano Glaineth, maraming salamat for the 75 stars. Okay, for number two, I see... A's and D's. Okay, nagahalo. A at B. Alin kaya ang tumpak na choice? Ma'am Rinmao for sending us 75 stars. Ganun din kay Ma'am April Joylin, 75 stars. Sir Dexter Daluyan, Pamaong, 75 stars. And Sir Mark G. Banusing, maraming salamat for the 75 stars. Okay, letter A. Karamihan choice ninyo. Who was a famous Austrian opera composer during the classical period known as Child Prodigy? Our correct choice here is letter A. No? So Mozart po ang ating tumpak na choice. Letter A. Let's take a look at our explanation. Okay. Perhaps the most famous of young classical composers, Mozart started playing piano at three, three years old, and made his first composition at five. His first published work, a string trio is ornate, complex, and far advanced for any five-year-old. At age six, Mozart began touring around Europe with his father and older sister, Nannerl. Okay, so age six pa lamang meron na siyang tour, no? So he started very young. He actually started playing the piano at just at, at the age of three years old. Okay, so meron na siyang composition at five. Meron na siyang published work at five years old. And he began touring at age six, no? So, napakagaling ni Mozart, okay? Now, what about the rest of our choices here? Joseph Fortunino Francesco or Francesco Verdi was an Italian composer best known for his operas. Hayden, on the other hand, or Franz Joseph Hayden was an Austrian composer, one of the most prolific and prominent composers of the classical period. Na marami din siyang ginawa. While Ludwig van Beethoven was a German, okay? So hindi po siya Austrian, he was German. He was a German composer and pianist. Beethoven remains one of the most admired composers in the history of Western music. His first major orchestral work, the first symphony, premiered in 1800, okay? But of course, we were looking for letter A, Mozart. Maraming maraming salamat, Ma'am Chona for sending us 50 pesos, okay? 50 pesos through YouTube. Maraming salamat po. Okay, we go to question number three. Which hypothesis would you test by the scientific technique of experimentation? Letter A, mitosis is the universal means of cell reproduction. Letter B, the cell is a structural unit in living things. Letter C, the rate of photosynthesis is independent of temperature. Or letter D, all proteins are composed of amino acids. Okay, what is your choice for question number three? Oh, may nagsabi may umuugong sa fan po yata. No? So pinatay ko muna yung fan. All right, letter C... Nakikita ko, maraming letter C. Ma'am Joyce Molato Cornejo, maraming salamat po for sending us 75 stars. Ma'am Anne Mary, maraming salamat for the 75 stars. Sir Axel, 
makatol. Maraming salamat po for 75 stars. Ganon din kay Ma'am Emeline Chago Epilan. Maraming maraming salamat po. Okay, what is your choice for question number three? Maraming salamat kay Ma'am Jeline Cruzat for sending us uh, our super, super sticker dyan naman po sa ating YouTube. Maraming maraming salamat po. Ma'am Jeline Cruzat, thank you po. Okay, number three, I see a lot of letter C's. Okay, so the question for number three is which hypothesis would you test by the scientific technique of experimentation. No? Aling hypothesis dito ang po pwede mong itest through experimentation. No? As you can see, the rest of your choices, A, B, and D, are all facts. No? So facts na sila, established facts na. And so the correct choice here, A, B, and D, I mean, no? are all established facts. Letter C, ang ating tumpak na choice. So pwede mo pa siyang laruin, po pwede mo pa siyang maging hypothesis. You can still use experimentation to test okay, whether the rate of, a, of photosynthesis is independent of temperature. No? So you can use different temperatures and you check the rate of photosynthesis. Ilan or gaano kadami yung glucose na naproduce ng plants while you tweak, no? iba-ibahin mo yung uh, temperature that you are using in your experimentation. So for number three, letter C po, ang tumpak na choice. A, B, and D are, again, are all established facts. No? Facts na po silang lahat. Mitosis is a universal means of cell reproduction. The cell is a structural unit in living things. And all proteins are composed of amino acids. Okay, so letter C. For number three, congratulations. Number four, the government wants a piece of private land for a government project. The owner resisted the government. How may the government own the land? Letter A, right of eminent domain. Letter B, right of habeas corpus. Letter C, right of government ownership. Or letter D, right of the sovereign over the, gov of, over the governed. Okay, what is your choice for number four? Ma Melody Don Gabayan, maraming salamat po for the 75 stars. Thank you so much. Ganon din kay Ma Melanie Rasona Hul Albi, 75 stars. Thank you po. Ma Lisa Grace P. Anota, maraming salamat for the 75 stars. Mm -hmm. Ganon din kay... Sir Abdul Abdurahim Isnain, maraming salamat for the 75 stars. Assalamu alaikum po sa lahat ng ating mga Muslim brothers and sisters. Good evening. Ganun din sa mga Kristiyano nating brothers and sisters. Good evening po sa inyong lahat. Okay, I see a lot of letter A's for number four. And of course, tumpak ang letter A, no right? Of eminent domain. Let's take a look at your explanation. When you say eminent domain, this refers to the power of the government to take private property and convert it into public use. Ito yung nakikita natin na nagaganap nung tayo nagkaroon ng road widening or nung tayo ay nagkaroon ng um, construction ng circumferential road. No? So, po pwedeng kunin ng gobyerno ang inyong private property if this is going to be used for public no for for the consumption of the public that means mas nauuna yung kung ano yung uh, ikakabuti na mas nakakarami kaysa sa inyo yung kasi yung paniniwala nila yung sinasabi nila of course parte pa rin ang inyong property ay parte pa rin ng Pilipinas so eventually Pilipinas pa rin no the Philippine government pa rin yung mas may right over you so that's the right of eminent domain but of course dapat ay binibigyan ka ng remuneration no? binibigyan ka ng bayad. Uh, hindi ko lang alam kung sino yung mga naka-experience dito kung uh, kayo ay nabigyan ng bayad no, ng ayuda or kayo ay na, nabayaran sa land na kinuha ng, ng government to be used no, for construction na gagamitin for public use. Okay? But for number four, letter A po ang tumpak na choice. We go to number five, a form of matter that can be further simplified may either be Letter A, an element or a compound. Letter B, a mixture or an atom. Letter C, an element or a mixture. Or letter D, a mixture or a compound. What's your choice? Sir Emerson Pautan, maraming maraming salamat po for sending us 25 pesos through YouTube. Okay, what's your choice for number five? Ma'am Amila Icy, maraming salamat for 75 stars. 
Ma'am Janet Soriano Bilango, maraming salamat po for the 75 stars. Ma'am Tin Tanse, yung ating uh, grand paayuda lagi, no? galing kay Ma'am Tin Tanse, 100 stars, maraming salamat po. Ma'am Siti Jayla or Jaylia Matingaw, maraming salamat for sending 75 stars. Ganon din si Sir or Ma'am. Sir Yong Angkanan, maraming salamat for the 75 stars. Ma'am Jeline, thank you for the 75 stars. Ganon din kay Ma'am Maureen Yandan for sending us 75 stars. Maraming salamat. Ma'am Quenisha Colinayo, maraming salamat for the 100 stars. Thank you po to all our star senders, super chatters, and super sticker senders. Okay, number five, I see this. Okay, itong pa kaya ang letter D, no? So sabi ng number five mo, Yung form of matter that can be further simplified may either be letter A, an element or a compound, letter B, a mixture or an atom, letter C, an element or a mixture, or letter D, a mixture or a compound. What is your choice? Okay, what's your choice for number five? I see this. Marami din namang letter A, no? Ayan, si Ma'am Anna Guemari Vrekerman, sabi ni Ma'am Anna. Tulad po dito sa amin, mga tinamaan ng PNR, binigyan po sila ng pabahay, pero ang lumabas po, rent to own yung mga bahay na binigay nila every month po, nagbabayad sila for 30 years. Okay, so kinuha na yung lupa, kunwari binigyan ng pabahay, yun pala i-rent to own, no? Minsan namimihasa din yung gobyerno. Okay, so mahalagang binabasa siguro kung meron mga kontratang binigay, may kasulatang binigay, ma mahalagang binabasa or kung uh, maaari ay magkaroon ng lawyer, no yung mga uh, may-ari ng lupa. Pwedeng sapaw, no? Okay, letter D. Ang tumpak na choice natin dito is letter D. Okay, so an element or a compound, a mixture and an atom, an element or a mixture. A mixture or a compound, bakit po letter D? Ang mali sa ating letter A and C is the term element. Yung element kasi is a type of substance that cannot be uh, further divided. No? So hindi na siya madedivide. Hindi na po siya madedivide. Yung element, element, hindi po po pwede. Ang mali naman po sa letter B mo is ang term na atom. No? Of course, atom came from the term atomos, which means cannot be divided no? from uh, Democritus na term. No? Binigay ito ni Democritus na atomos. No? It cannot be further divided. And so letter D po ang ating tumpak na choice. Let's take a look at our slide. Okay, so matter can be divided uh, by by two, no? So you have your pure substance and your mixture. And for your pure substance, you can have an element or a compound. So when you say element, ito po yung meron lamang one type of atom. So for example, gold, your carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, all those things that you find in your periodic table, those are all elements. Ang compound mo naman is a combination of elements, say water. Okay, so water H2O. Dalawang atoms ng hydrogen at isang atom ng oxygen. That is an example of your compound. Your acids are examples of your compounds. Mixtures are, on the other hand, this is um, a type of physical na physical components na siya. No? So physical mixture, usually yung ating sinasabi. Physically, eh, kinumbine sila. You have two types for this, your homogeneous mixture and your heterogeneous mixture. When you say homogeneous mixture, homo means one. It only has one Phase. It only has one appearance. For example, salt solution. Na meron kang uh, salt at meron kang tubig. Hinalo mo sila. Hindi mo na nakikita yung dalawang parte. Hindi mo na nakikita separately yung salt mo at yung tubig. Pero iisa na lamang yung kanilang appearance. You call that your homogeneous mixture. Heterogeneous mixture, on the other hand, hetero means many. And your examples for this are your, say, halo-halo. No? Meron kang Sago, meron kang yellow, meron kang leche flan, meron kang ice cream, meron kang beans, no? nagutom tuloy tayo. But choy is also a heterogeneous mixture. Nakikita mo pa yung iba't ibang sangkap. No? Yan yung ibig sabihin ng heterogeneous mixture. Now sa ating choice kanina, yung ating uh, tumpak na choice was mixture, po pwede mo silang i-separate yung kanyang parts physically, no? through physical separation, po pwedeng decantation, Pag uh, nagluto ka ng, ng pansit kanton, po pwede mong i-separate yung pansit from the tubig through decantation. No? Dahan-dahan mong ipopour out yung tubig. 
Uh, po, pwede din naman physically kukunin mo. For example, ayaw mo ng pasas sa iyong, uh, say, pizza. So, so pwede, po, pwede mong himayin, no? pwede mong kunin yung pasas. No? So, you can uh, separate the different components of your mixtures physically, through physical means. While for your compound, you can also separate the different parts of your compounds, but it's only through chemical procedures. No? So, po, pwede pa rin silang ma-separate. Ma Pero hindi na siya physical means, hindi na siya physical processes through separation, but it's going to be through chemical processes. And so ito pa rin yung ating choice, mixture and compound. Sila pa rin yung ating uh, tumpak na choice for this question. Okay, maraming salamat ma'am Zaymina Abusaman for sending us 37 pesos through YouTube. Maraming maraming salamat po. Okay, we go to question number six, and this, of course, is our question of the day. So again, if you are watching us on YouTube, please do include the number of the item, and of course, try to answer this correctly para mapasama po kayo sa ating first five na lucky winners for our GCash or load. Which among the following best describes a recession? Letter A, no change in real GNP from one period to the next. Letter B, nominal GNP declines from one period to the next. Letter C, an increase in real GNP from one period to the next. Or letter D, a fall in real GDP over two consecutive time periods. What's your choice for number six? Again, if you are watching us on YouTube, include the number of the item and, of course, your answer. The first five uh, tumpak no, na answers, of course, are going to have a chance to um, become winners of our GCash or load. Okay, number six, what is your choice? What's your choice for question number six? Okay, I see of oh, lagging loading yung utak, sabi ni ma'am or ni sir, no? I see C's and D's. Meron ding ilang B and A, no? Ano, pa, ano kaya yung tumpak na choice natin? Okay, number six, social science or social studies. Which among the following best describes a recession? Ang tumpak na choice natin dito, definition ng inyong recession is letter D. This is a fall in real GDP over two consecutive time periods. Now let's take a look at your definition. So when you say GDP, uh, G not GDP, recession, a period of temporary economic decline during which trade and industrial activity are reduced, generally identified by a fall in GDP into successive nor consecutive quarters. Okay, so that's the definition of your recession. Pag sinabi mong may recession, mahina yung ekonomiya ng isang country. No? So there is a fall in real GDP over two consecutive time periods. Letter D po ang tumpak na choice. Let's take a look at the difference between your GNP and GDP. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng GNP at GDP? Okay. GNP at GDP mo, when you say GDP, uh, this is gross domes domestic products, no? Gross domestic products. Well, GNP is gross national products. So when you say gross domestic products, it's everything everything produced within the country. Lahat ng na produce in a country. So say, lahat ng productions, lahat ng products na nagawa or na produce sa United States of America. Now that's your GDP. Okay? So everything that was produced within the country. But when you say GNP, this means means everything produced by residents of the country, including those abroad, minus the goods produced by foreign residents. So, when you say GNP, lahat ng naproduce ng Americano okay, in a certain quarter, or lahat ng naproduce ng Pilipino in a certain quarter, including those Filipinos na merong, for example, or your Americans na merong companies in other countries, pero excluding yung mga na-produce ng ibang lahi in that country, okay? So when you say gross domestic product, lahat ng na-produce within the country, within the country, kaya domestic. But when you say gross national product by the term national, okay? So nationality mo, for example, you are American. If you are American, even if you have production facilities no sa Pilipinas, for example, kasali siya sa GNP, 
okay because you are uh, an american citizen american by by nationality no? so when you say gnp again lahat ng produkto ng nationalities of that country uh, including those that were produced in other countries pero excluding the production of uh, other other nationalities in that country okay so gtp and gnp so again when you say recession dito it is a period of temporary decline sa inyong GDP in two successive quarters, okay? Uh, number seven, a tax whose burden expressed as a percentage of income increases as income increases is called letter A, a progressive tax, letter B, a regressive tax, letter C, a proportional tax, or letter D, none of the above. Basahin ko lamang yung comment ni Ma'am Rhea Lu De Castro. Good evening po. Maraming salamat po, Guru Pinoy and Ma'am Nek. LPT na po ako. God bless you po. Dahil sa kakanood ko po ng mga previous and recent videos nyo sa YouTube. Retaker po ako for the third time. Nakuha ko na rin po. Thank you po talaga. Maraming salamat, of course, for your positive feedback. And congratulations, Ma'am Rhea Lu De Castro. Maraming maraming salamat po. Ma'am Leia Liam, maraming salamat for sending us 37 pesos dyan po sa YouTube. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Leia Liam. Okay, what's your choice? Number seven. Ma'am Jessa Rose Congreso, maraming salamat po for sending us 75 stars. Thank you. Ganon din po kay Ma'am Jeneline Burgos, 75 stars. Sir Rajem. Ray Jim Scott, La Quinta, 75 stars. Maraming salamat. Sir Conrus Adbatuan, 75 stars. Maraming salamat po. Ma'am Charlotte Legada, 75 stars. Ma'am Dana Ina Codaste, 75 stars. And Ma'am Daisy Bersaba MacBridge, 75 stars. Ganun din kay Ma'am Jackie Lu, maraming salamat for sending 99 stars. Maraming salamat po to all our star senders, super chatters, and super sticker senders. Okay, what's your choice for question number seven? A tax whose burden expressed as a percentage of income increases as income increases is called letter A, progressive tax, letter B, regressive tax, letter C, proportional tax, or letter D, none of the above. Ang tumpak na choice, karamiyang sagot niyo ay letter A, and letter A is tumpak. No? So letter A po yan, progressive tax. Okay, so when you say progressive tax, this is tax that imposes a larger burden on those who are richer. So kung ikaw ay mas mayaman, mas malaki din yung tax mo kaysa sa medyo kapo sa buhay. No? So tayo sa Pilipinas, progressive yung tax natin. Pag malaki yung income mo, malaki din yung babayaran mo. No? Ganun din kahit na may business ka. Pag malaki yung kita mo for this month, malaki yung babayaran mo. Pag medyo mahina yung business mo for the following month, konti din yung babayaran mong tax. Okay? So that's progressive tax. Ito yung pinafollow natin dyan sa Pinas, no? dito sa Pinas. Regress Progressive tax, on the other hand, is one where the average tax burden decreases with income. No? So, um, inversely proportional naman. Kabalik taran siya ng progressive. Progressive tax kasi, nag-increase yung income mo, nag-i-increase din yung tax mo. While for your regressive tax, nag-increase yung income mo, lumiliit yung tax mo. No? So, balik tad. Kapag ka ikaw ay mas yumayaman, mas kumukonte yung tax mo. Yan po yung sinasabi ng inyong regressive tax. Okay? Now, ang inyong proportional tax naman, letter C, from the term proportional, no, proportionate lamang, or this is also called your flat tax from the term flat, is one in which the percentage of a person's income that is taxed remains constant regardless of how much money he or she earns. It is the same for taxpayers with low, moderate, and high income. That means... Pare-parehas lamang po yung amount na binabayaran sa tax. No? Kahit malaki yung income mo, konti yung income mo, middle class ka, pare-parehas kayong lahat ng bayad sa tax. Okay? So that's proportional tax or flat tax. Pero yung ating hinahanap ay letter A po, progressive tax. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Ivy Bintin for the 25 pesos. Thank you po. Number eight, who among the following is given the distinction as the national artist for sculpture? Letter A, Jose Alcantara. Letter B, Juan Luna. Letter C, Napoleon Abueva. Or letter D, Jose Blanco. Who is your choice for number eight? Rainy, excuse me, no, excuse me po. Rainy, please close the door, love. Thank you. Okay, number eight. 
What is your choice for question number eight? Ma'am Jemery Tagbar Barrera, maraming salamat po for the 75 stars. Sir Marjon A. Lapitan, maraming salamat for the 75 stars. Thank you po. Ma'am Michelle De La Paz, maraming salamat for the 75 stars. Okay, what is your choice? For question number eight, I see a lot of letter C's. Abueva, sabi nila, no? Letter C, Abueva. And Abueva, ang ating tumpak na choice. So national artist for sculpture is Napoleon Abueva. And that is our choice for number eight, okay? So this year is one of the most outstanding works by Abueva, no? The Blood Compact in Tagbilaran. Siya po yung gumawa ng Blood Compact. In Tagbilaran, that's uh, Napoleon Abueva. Okay, now what about the rest of our choices? Si Jose Alcantara won first prize in the first Southeast Asian Art Conference and Competition, Behold the Man. His most famous work is a multi-panel piece, 1,536 meter sculpture on one of the outside out, outside walls of the Film Life Theater in UN Avenue in Manila. No? So ito yung gawa ni Jose Alcantara. Sculpture din naman siya. Si Juan Luna, of course, we know him to be a painter and one of uh, his most famous works, of course, is the Spoliarium. Another is the Death of Cleopatra. Ito yung nanalo ng silver. No? Kasama, kasama ito sa ating question last week. Okay, so one Luna, that's one Luna. And Jose V. Blanco naman was a muralist and national artist nominee known for richly colorful and celebratory works of the Tagalog pastoral. Blanco's works have been likened to that of another famous son of Angono, the late national artist Carlos Botong Francisco. And so this is one of his famous works, Jose V. Blanco, the fisherman in boat. Now you know that Angono Rizal is the art capital of the Philippines. Lumalabas po yan sa left. No? The art capital of the Philippines is Angono Rizal. Okay, so pero yung hinahanap po natin was Abueva. Okay, so Abueva po ang ating tumpak na choice for number eight. That's letter C. Okay, we move on with question number nine. Maraming salamat, Sir J.R. Sireno, for sending us 25 pesos on YouTube. Number nine, when the moon is between the sun and the earth, the moon blocks the light from the sun, therefore casting a shadow on the earth. This phenomenon is called blank. Letter A, lunar eclipse. Letter B, Halley's Comet. Letter C, solar eclipse. Or letter D, Umbra. Okay, what's your choice for number nine? Number nine po, ano ang ating tumpak na choice? Okay, again, please put your answers in our comment box. What is your choice for question number nine? Okay, what is our choice? Number nine. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Raquel Ana Altres, for sending us 50 Hong Kong dollars. Maraming maraming salamat po for the super sticker. Okay, what is your choice for question number nine? I see a lot of letter C's. Tumpak kaya ang letter C. Ma Mary Joanne, maraming salamat po for the 75 stars. Ganon din kay Ma'am Janeline Diaz for the 75 stars. Maraming salamat. Kay Ma Melanie Magsino Reyes, we're sending us 100 stars. Okay, what is your choice for question number nine? All right, I see a lot of letter C sa ating comment box. And of course, letter C ang tumpak na choice dito. Now remember, whenever you have the three heavenly bodies, that's the sun, the moon, and the earth that's um, that are aligned, no? pag nag-align yung sun, moon, and earth mo, you'd call this phenomenon an eclipse. Okay? And we have two types of eclipses. Your solar eclipse, again, your mnemonic for this, your acronym would be SMET. No? So sun, moon, earth, that's your solar eclipse. But when you say lunar eclipse, your mnemonic for this would be SEM. Okay? So sun, earth, moon, that's your lunar eclipse. Now, yung term po na umbra, 
when you say umbra, ito yung uh, parte ng earth na nagfo-fall sa shadow, no? pinaka-shadow ng inyong eclipse. That's the umbra. And those parts that fall sa outer, outer part ng inyong shadow, you'd call this penumbra. So pag sinabi mong may umbra sa inyong parte, no? parte sa inyong place, during an eclipse, that means you are going to have a total solar eclipse no? dahil nasa umbra ka, nasa pinaka-shadow ka ng eclipse. Pero pag penumbra, maaring partial lamang yung inyong eclipse. No? Kasi nasa, nasa side ka lang, nasa uh, outskirts ka na ng eclipse. That's your penumbra. Now, what about letter B? No? Halley's Comet, ito yung hindi natin na, na uh, discuss. Ito naman po yung Halley's Comet. The Halley's Comet or Comet Halley, uh, named after the astronomer Edmond Halley, is a short period comet visible from Earth every 75 to 79 years. Halley is the only known short period comet that is regularly visible to the naked eye from Earth and thus the only naked eye comet that can appear twice. Halley last appeared in the inner parts of the solar system in 1986 and will next appear in mid-2061. Okay, buhay pa kaya tayo? No, no, that's the question. Okay, so that's Halley's comet. Pero yung ating hinahanap po was solar eclipse, letter C. We go to number 10. What is the least common multiple of 24 and 80? Letter A, 360. Letter B, 240. Letter C, 80. Or letter D, 480. What's your choice for question number 10? Ma'am Osi Kaburnay, maraming salamat po for sending us 100 stars. Ma'am Sheila Ansaure, maraming salamat for the 75 stars. Thank you po. Ma'am Osi Kaburnay for another 100 stars. Maraming salamat po. Ma'am Mary Lee GT for sending us 75 stars. Thank you. Ma'am Janice Caballero Butang. Thank you for the 75 stars. Ma'am Hazel Asis, 75 stars. Maraming salamat po. Ma'am Joy Tachado Alipio, maraming salamat for sending us 75 stars. Okay, number 10, I see a lot of letter Bs. Okay, so for number 10, hinahanap natin is least common multiple. So again, yung hint natin dito, isang technique, pag hinahanap natin ay least common multiple, no, your LCM or sometimes LCD if you are given fractions, uh, unahin po natin yung pinakamababang choice. no. So, iti-check mo, when you check, tingnan mo muna yung pinakamababang choice. You start with your pinakamababang choice. Kasi pag tumpak na ito, that means siya na yung sagot. No? Pag kasi um, nagsimula ka sa matataas, tapos wala siyang, wala siyang remainder, maaring mamali ka sa iyong pagsagot. Maaring tama siya dahil wala siyang remainder, pero may, um, meron, pala siyang, meron palang mas mababa sa kanya. Kasi nahanap natin is least, no? so pinakamababa. Pag GCF naman, baliktad, no? unahin nyo po yung, mas, uh, yung pinakamataas sa inyong choices, pinakamalaking number sa inyong choice. Okay, so letter C, 80. Of course, you are going to try to divide 80 by the numbers that are given here. And we can see that 80 cannot be your correct choice because 80 divided by 24, hindi po po pwede, no? So cannot be, meron siyang remainder. You, know, you go, you go to your next um Next least number, in this case, 240. 240 divided by 24, po pwede, that's 10. 240 divided by 80, that's going to be 3. And so you know that letter B ang tumpak na choice. Okay, so letter B for number 10. We go to number 11. Which number has more than four factors? Letter A, 99. Letter B, 95. Letter C, 93. Or letter D, 97. Okay, what is your choice for number 11? Ano po ang tumpak na choice? For question 11. 